And today we're going to be talking about books that give us Twilight Zone feels. I feel like everyone knows the Twilight Zone, but if you don't, it's kind of like Black Mirror before Black Mirror. It's a classic. You should know about the Twilight Zone, don't you know about the Twilight Zone? It's a concept that maybe at first look sounds like it's going to be cool, but then you actually submerge yourself in the world where this concept is a thing and then it comes back around to bite you in the ass in this like sometimes really subtle amazing creepy way i love that or sometimes really horrifying way that you find yourself completely submerged in it and by the time you realize what's happened there's no going back a lot of my favorite books are books that give you twilight zone feels or twilight zone vibes i like that swift kick in the ass that you did not expect that knocks you off kilter and makes you Thing for a long time after you close the book. I'm going to be sharing a wide range of Twilight Zone vibe books, so not all of them are like creepy, 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 creepy. Some are just like, it's a concept, and they went this way with it. But if you look at it this way, that's creepy. This discussion was inspired by our February Book Explosion Book of the Month. This month we're working with Quirk Books, and we read This Is Not The Just Show by Anna Carey. Our Book Explosion live show discussion for this is going to be March 6th, so you still have time to pick it up if you haven't yet. So this Is Not The Just Show is about this young girl named Jess who's living in the 90s and slowly comes to discover that her life isn't what she thought it was. And I feel like this is a book that's better gone in blind. I knew what the concept was so I was waiting for it but I think it would have been more fun if I didn't know the concept at all. I'll just read you the synopsis because I don't want to ruin anything that could be ruined by me speaking about it any further. The year is 1998 and like any other teenager Jess Flynn is trying to get through her junior year without drama but drama seems to keep finding her. Between her new crush on her childhood best friend, overprotective parents, cramping her social life, and her sister's worsening health, the only constant is change. And her small town of Swickley, which feels smaller by the day. Swickley's getting weirder by the day too. Half the population has been struck down by a mysterious flu. Conversations seem to end awkwardly when Jess enters the room. And then one day, a tiny sleek black device with an Apple logo on it falls out of her best friend's backpack and lands at Jess's feet. But the iPhone won't exist for another nine years. Bum bum bum! Black Mirror meets my so-called life. This is now the Jess Show is out now. If you're interested, I left a link in the description if you want to pick it up. Black Mirror Twilight Zone books. The first book I have is the first book that always comes to mind when I think of Twilight Zone-esque books, and that is The Circle by Dave Eggers. I read this, I feel like four years ago now, and what makes it so great is that it really feels like it's happening right now in our current life. Like right now, not in the near future, and not in like a slightly different future. It's like happening right now. If you saw the movie, it was a terrible adaptation, so please don't go by that. It's an adult book. It's a slow burn. It creeps up on you until, like I said, you're under it and you can't get out. And you're like, oh my god. <laughs> then you take a step back and look at the world we live in and you're like, oh my god. It's one of those that just leaves you thinking and leaves you feeling like slightly nauseous in the best way. Basic premise, the lead character's name is May, she's 24, and she starts working for The Circle, which is like this book's equivalent of Google or Facebook or one of those major tech moguls where all the employees live on campus. I did the audiobook and something about the audiobook listening to it, because there's a lot of passages where like we're spiraling into what's happening and and it really hits you when you're listening to the audio. You do have to be a more patient reader because it's an adult novel. It's slower paced. Like I said, it's a slow burn, but like it's a great slow burn. Next, one of my favorite books ever, Verity by Colleen Hoover. I've gone too many videos without mentioning Verity by Colleen Hoover. Like what an amazing spectacular novel that you should just go into without knowing anything about it. <laughs> this is more Twilight Zone than Black Mirror. I feel like Black Mirror has like a technological base to most of its stories. Twilight Zone will go in in whatever direction it feels like a lot of the time. Verity is one of those that's not very technologically dependent. It's a story that takes place, you know, not in a cabin in the woods, but you know, in a house, a secluded house on a lake. The concept doesn't hinge around a device. It's about an author and she's hired to finish a famous series by this renowned murder mystery writer. That writer can't finish a contractually obliged series, so they are hiring another writer to finish the last couple books. Their lead character is the writer that is is hired to finish those books. We go from there. The next book I have here is a lighter take. It includes a concept that could be 
Twilight Zone-y, but in the way that it is in the book, it's lighthearted. And I thought about this a lot because it's a book I wrote. I know. It's better together. I have to include it in the video. It's coming out June 1st, and there is an aspect of it that I spent a lot of time thinking about that could be really Twilight zone -y if it was taken in a darker direction. There's a dash of Freaky Friday in this book, and if you think about that shit happening to you, it's kind of horrifying. If you've watched the movie Freaky Friday with Lindsay Lohan and her mom, they don't know when they're gonna switch back. And being stuck out of your own body is horrifying, and that could be a really scary concept for a book that wasn't funny, you know? So Better Together is like a lighthearted rom-com drama. It's my new book. It comes out June 1st. It's about two sisters separated by divorce. It's inspired by the parent trap, so it's got like those 90s trope vibes happening in there. And I know the parent trap first one came out like back in the 60s, I want to say, but there was a big resurgence of parent trap-like movies in the 90s. Like there's that Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen one where they switched places, like the twins switching places trope. They're not twins. They're two sisters separated by divorce. These two sisters are both quarter life crisising. They're both living with these parents that really strongly dislike the other parent and it's profoundly affected their upbringing and when these two sisters who are living on opposite coasts run into each other again over a decade later, things unravel from there. It's available for pre-order now. There's a Barnes & Noble special edition with Siri on the cover and a bonus chapter from Siri's point of view that is the epilogue to the epilogue so it is like the end of the book that you don't get in the regular edition and all the Barnes & Noble special editions will be signed and or if you want to support an indie bookshop I have partnered with Booksy which is just a gem of a bookstore in the middle of LA and if you pre-order from Booksoup you can get a personalized signed copy and Booksoup does ship internationally. Barnes & Noble ships internationally to a couple different countries. Booksoup ships internationally like I asked them and they're like yes they do that. So if you want to order from them or from Barnes & Noble or from whatever bookstore you fancy links are in the description below. Thank you so much for pre-ordering if you have already or if you're planning to. I really appreciate it and I hope Better Together provides you with some joy, some escapism, some fun rom, and some sister feels. It's out June 1st, 2021. It's coming so soon. It's less than 100 days away. The next book I have here is the first in one of my favorite trilogies of all time, Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This could most definitely be turned into a television series that has extreme black mirror Twilight Zone vibes. Every episode. It, there's just so many aspects to it that throw you into these philosophical thought spirals. For days! If you haven't heard me talk about the concept yet, Scythe is our world when we've gone to a point where we have cured all diseases. So death isn't a thing. And to stop overpopulation, there have to be actual people who are hired to kill people called scythes. And they have certain laws, but for the most part, they're all powerful and they get to choose who dies. Each scythe has a different system for choosing who dies. So if they didn't kill a certain quota of people per year, the world would become extremely overpopulated because nobody dies. You can do this thing called turning a corner at whatever age you like, and you can age all the way back down to 21 physically, <laughs> if you feel like it. When you live forever, what starts to happen to life. What is valuable? What is important? You can think about that forever. This is a three book trilogy. They're all excellent. It's Scythe, Thunderhead, and The Toll. I have book talks for each of them. Highly, 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 highly recommend. Next! The Power by Naomi Alderman. This book is a fucking ride. This is definitely, I want to say leaning more toward the Black Mirror end of the Twilight Zone Black Mirror spectrum. It takes place in a world. It's again our world, but in a very distant future, like 5,000 years ahead or more women have evolved to have this new organ that like goes across your collarbone that allows them to shock people. Like it gives them electric powers basically. And they can trace it back to like how an eel shocks different fish in the sea. Women have evolved to have this, God, I can't remember what it's called. Some women's organ is stronger than others. So some women are really, really, really dangerous, but all women can be dangerous. It's all about how that flips the patriarchy on its head and how that changes the world completely little by little. It ultimately takes place, I mean, years ahead of time. And it's this author writing about the time when this first emerged, when women with these abilities first came out of the woodwork and how it changed everything when we as a species rebuilt ourselves. It's crazy, man. It leaves you feeling boggled. Little by little, the further you get into it, the scarier it gets. Because at first you're like, whoa, this is so cool. And then slowly but surely you're like, oh no. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. 
Except, like, way more serious. Like, it's not funny. You, you get caught again in these thought spirals about power. At the end of the book, I did not feel great. <laughs> it was one of those, like, I love how much it made me think, but also, at the end, it was very Black Mirror, where it's like, okay, I need a second. I feel nauseous. Like, a lot of Black Mirror episodes are like that, where are like, oh god, oh god. <laughs> Oh god, I need I need a break. I don't think this one needs any explaining, but this is most definitely a Black Mirror situation. Hunger Games is reflecting back the worst parts of our society and where that could lead us in the scariest way possible. I feel like over time, how horrifying the Hunger Games actually is has just been eroded by how popular the book is. It's refreshed in the harshest way possible. If you read the book that came out last year, A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, it's here, it's behind Jane of Gold. Wowza! That book hurt to read. Again, mirroring the worst parts of humanity, amplifying them in ways that make you wanna throw up. Hunger Games less makes you wanna throw up. You're rooting for our lead character, but since the lead is President Snow in The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, you just wanna throw up the whole time because he's horrible. <gasps> the call! This is most definitely like more of a Twilight Zone thing. Maybe Twilight Zone, I feel like, isn't afraid to go in a more magical direction with their horrifying concepts. And that is where we go with the call. There are these fairies that were, I feel like, banished from Ireland back ages ago and treated very, very poorly. And it feels very real. I'm explaining it in a way that's like, oh, this feels really fantasy, but it feels real. And now they've returned with a fucking vengeance. They basically shut Ireland down from the rest of the world. And anything that tries to leave crashes and everyone dies. And every single person under 19, I think, at one point between 12 and 18, they will experience the call. And part of like what's so horrifying about it is you don't know when it's coming. It has cut their population exponentially. And so now they can't even have their kids lead a regular life. They have to send them to school to learn how to survive the call so that hopefully they'll get through it and be able to live on into adulthood. And in our world, the call lasts three minutes so a kid will just disappear. They'll disappear and they'll reappear three minutes later either alive or completely mutilated and dead or completely mutilated and alive. They're zipped out of our world for 24 hours to live in this like hellscape with these fae that are trying to kill them. It's very very scary but it was very good and it like hit you hard in a lot of places. <laughs> Can't not mention this one. All the Twilight Zone feels up in here. <laughs> this boy you have an enormous crush on. You can't imagine him being interested in you, and then he is. It starts to seem like he might like you too. You're at the point where you're falling in love, where you realize that he didn't actually initially like you. He's a vampire, and he really, really wanted to kill you, and he still does all the time. The guy you love is always trying not to murder you, but like, you're gonna be with him anyway. That's dark, man. That's dark. The Giver! This is a very Twilight Zone-esque book. It's one of those more subtle ones. It doesn't seem so terrible until it's so terrible. It's this utopian society where everyone's equal, everyone sees in black and white. Every year as a child, you get the same gift when you're five, the same gift when you're six, and there's one guy that holds all the memories of what life used to be like before this. At a glance, it's like, I guess it's worth it for them. And then you get a little deeper and you're like, no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. What has TikTok done to me? I always think and oh no, the song now. I don't even know what that song, what, what, what is that sound clip from? I don't know, other than TikTok. Like, where did they take it from? I don't know. The Giver has those Twilight Zone vibes and it's why I loved it so much when I picked it up in fifth grade. Then we read it in eighth grade. It's like an assigned book and I was like, oh my God, I read that ages ago and it was so good. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I really should reread this because I feel like I'm going to have an entirely new perspective, new philosophical thought spirals because the last time I read this, I was 13 years old. Wow. Oh my god, that was so long ago now. <laughs> but I still have like such fond memories of reading this because it gave me so many thoughts and feelings. Next! A Black Mirror, everyone! <laughs> and that is legend, and if you don't know, it's in a world where the United States has been torn apart by civil war. One portion of the United States is under military rule, and the other part is ruled over by corporations. And the more you think about that aspect of it, the more icky their world feels. It's already crazy. When you read it, you'll find out the situation that they're in is already terrible. <laughs> then it just gets more horrifying, like that sinking feeling in your 
gut gets more and more intense. But it's a great, great trilogy. Amazing characters make it so that you don't feel completely down. You feel really excited to watch them succeed and kick major ass. Layla! This is definitely a Twilight zone feeling book. It could be Black Mirror too. It's one of those that could go either way. It's got a little bit of a supernatural flair, so that's why I'm leaning more toward the Twilight Zone. Do 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 do. But the story feels very modern. It's a Colleen Hoover book, so it's when you definitely want to go in without really reading much about it. It's a romance, and there's some freaky shit that goes down. They both die at the end is another one of like the most Black Mirror Twilight Zone books that I have, and it's one of my favorite contemporaries of all time. Basically, the premise here is on the day you're going to die and you get a phone call and it's like you're going to die tomorrow <laughs> and you just do like they know all the people that are going to die so when you get that call there's an app that you can use to find someone else that also got the call that day so you can hang out with someone on your last day and you don't have to be alone and that is what it's about two young men who got the call and they spend the day together they start falling for each other and it's wonderful and thought-provoking and excellent and it's going to be a show on HBO which is so exciting like I'm just it's, it's a concept that doesn't need to be limited to this one story like there are so many stories that could be told in this very thought-provoking world where there is a death forecast every day the vanishing half by Brit Bennett I just read this and I really wanted to put it in here because it's so good and I want to talk about it it's definitely more of a subtle black mirror feel about these two twin sisters and about how different differently their lives were based on the direction in which they took. This is another one that I don't want to tell you too much because there's so much beauty in watching it unfold and not knowing exactly where it's going. But basically there's these two twin sisters and they live in this very small town with this very light-skinned black community and they just they want to get out of this town. <laughs> their whole life they wanted to get out. When they're 16 they get out and then they end up going their separate ways and leading completely different lives. The journey is so heartbreaking and heart-wrenching and the parallels between their lives and their daughter's lives are beautiful. I did the audiobook. It was excellent. You can do the audiobook. I'm an Audible affiliate if you don't know. My link's in the description below. You can get your first audiobook for free. This is another adult novel. Gosh, I've been reading so many adult novels. I'm not doing it on purpose. Just like I've never done it on purpose before. <laughs> Go! Whoa! 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 Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is, I would put it in the Twilight Zone one. It's about a community of humans on a planet where they're constantly trying to be eradicated by a different alien race. The more you zoom out on it, the more thought provoking the whole situation becomes. <laughs> this is a series and there's two books out. The angle that Brandon Sanderson takes on being human and survival is very well done. Again, it makes you sit and think. And it doesn't have the heaviness that Black Mirror has. It doesn't have the scariness so much that the Twilight Zone has. It just has that profound aspect and it's full of friendship and fun and comedy. It's great. The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I could not talk about The Host and this could most definitely be an episode of Black Mirror. Like, mo 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 most definitely. You're still sleeping on The Host. Why? Why? This book makes me cry, laugh, ponder, stare off into the distance for hours. And it's the first one that I ever read that really touched on the theme of what it means to be human and that's like an ongoing theme that I love to explore. I read this, you know, back in 2008 and I was only 18. At every new age when you explore that theme, it kind of hits you a little differently. It never gets old. It's the best. Uh, do you know what Host is about? There's an alien race that has taken over a large part of the human population. This particular alien is like a parasite. So they use human bodies and that's all you really need to know. There's amazing characters and a great love triangle and it's a slow burn. It's an adult novel. <gasps> oh my god. Another one of my favorites. Ninth House. Ninth House is more, more Black mirror -y again. Because it just feels very modern and I see the Twilight Zone as an older. It could go either way. It takes place on the Yale campus and it's all about their secret societies. And these secret societies utilize these ancient like sacrificial ceremonies to gain access to supernatural abilities and to see ghosts. It gets real creepy and profound with how the magic works 
and with where the ethical lines blur. So our lead character, Alex, actually just sees dead people. And that's why they recruit her. Because that's something that they've never encountered before. And her life has been horrifying because of this. This book is super, super dark. Captivating, compelling, it's scary. <laughs> it's a little scary. Last but not least, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I'm gonna talk about it whenever I can because I love it so much. I don't wanna share any details about this because that makes it much, much better. It's about this young woman. So she's 23. It's an adult novel. Oh, so is 9,000. It's an adult novel. Don't read it. Like that one, really don't read it if you don't feel you're ready for adult content. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue is not as intense as 9,000. Like it's not as rated R. It's about this girl who lived in the 1600s in France. She's in this very small town. Her parents are going to marry her all and she wants anything but that. She wants to live. She wants to travel. She wants to go places. She doesn't want to be somebody's. She wants to be free. And on her wedding night, she makes this desperate plea to the gods of old. You're not supposed to pray to them past sundown or else you get the dark gods. The sun's going down and she makes this plea and she makes a deal to gain her freedom. But there are very harsh consequences that she has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so good. It's so excellent. And that, my friends, is it. I'd love to hear if you have any recommendations that give you these feels that I have not mentioned. Please let me know in the comments. My name is Christine. I'm an author. My new book comes out June 1st. It's called Better Together. My first book is Again But Better and the paperback comes out April 6th with a bonus chapter. I'm at Exime on Twitter and Instagram. If you don't follow me there already, please do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye!